This is a keyboard that I bought my son about 10 years ago and we recently had an interest to see if it worked so we could use it otherwise we're going to replace it and of course the first problem is it's missing its power cord and because it's almost Christmas I thought this would be a good time to do a video about power cords and how to figure out what power cord you need if 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 it's missing rather than just going to the person that makes it like Casio you could go to Casio and I'm sure you could probably get the power cord for this but you already may have it in a box but it's a little risky just plugging any power cord into it and seeing if it will work just because the end fits doesn't mean it's going to have the re requirements needed and you can possibly blow up your electronics and that might be what's wrong with this this has been around and everybody's played with this and my son remembers it may have gotten plugged in incorrectly and popped if that's the case it's going to go to the scrapyard but uh, I figure this is a good opportunity to teach you how to figure out what power cord you need so let's get on with the clues A little update on my chair video I found this on the floor about two days later if you watch my chair repair video it's the bearing for it to spin and to be honest with you I never even missed it uh, yeah I'll just stick it aside I don't think I'm gonna take it apart and put it back in what do you think yeah you guys really think I'm cynical yeah, I think I am, actually. Anyway, this is the Casio CTK-491. I haven't looked it up or anything yet. But it's rating DC 9 volts, okay? This has given us clues, and you have to look at all this. And I've started writing this down here on my pad. That's the first thing you do, is learn what you have. So you can power this with batteries or you can plug it into an adapter which makes more sense I mean how long would batteries last on this really and if you keep reading we know it's a 9 volt DC but we still don't know how much amperage we need and those are the two things that you have to know you actually have to know three things to to suit the right power cord because that's lost I don't know if I mentioned that but I don't have that but here's our clue right here DC 9 volts 850 milliamps and that's the answer so what we need is a DC 9 volt 850 milliamp plug or better and when I say or better the 9 volts has to remain the same within a half a volt each way and the milliamps has to be 850 milliamp or greater and you know a thousand milliamp is one amp so it can be bigger but it can't be smaller and the nine volts has to be within a half a volt so if I had a eight and a half volt 850 milliamp DC adapter it would work now there's one more twist to this and that is the plug connection let's look at it okay so now that we know the power requirements we have to find out where the power goes in and it goes in right here because it says DC 9 volts there's a little picture above that let's take a look at that in more detail that's a clue this little diagram in the center is a photo you know a diagram of a plug that fits in here the female part and it's showing the negative goes to the center of that hole see the negative goes to the center of the hole and the positive, the plus, goes to the outside casing. So, let me get a plug that will fit this and I'll go into more detail. This isn't the right plug, but I it's similar, so I'm going to show you. But what I mean by this diagram is this outside case, this metal part, has to be, in this case, positive. Okay? Because that's what our diagram shows us. And the center of this will be a negative so a positive case and a 
negative center in this case. And I got to tell you that this is completely backwards to what is normal. And I don't know why, but, well, actually I have some clues. Manufacturers do this on purpose. I swear they do because positive center is pretty common. And generically, positive center is the way it should be. And they, my idea is they've switched these around so that you'll grab the wrong power wall wart, plug it in, and blow a fuse or a diode inside here that makes it not usable. I really believe that because why wouldn't you go with a positive center when that's given as standard? I mean, I don't know if there's any written rule, but 80% of the stuff I look at is always a positive center. Anyway, that is a story within itself, and leave me, leave me your comment what you think about it. So anyway, I have to find an adapter in my stash that is a center negative, outside casing positive, 9 volt, 9 volt DC, 850 milli milliamp or greater. I feel like this is just going too long, but this stuff's important if you're trying to figure out what plug you need and you have no idea, and this is how you do it. Anyway, let me go through my stash and see how close I can come to that. I can vary the little the number a little bit, but I have to stay within that 9 volt. And if I find one that the 9 volt 850 milliamps are perfect, but this is a negative center and I have a positive, which is probably going to happen, I'll have to cut the cord apart and switch negative for positive and basically modify the, the cord so it will work with this. And we haven't even gotten to the point of fixing this yet. There might be something wrong with it, or it just might be missing the AC adapter. But my son remembers that it got plugged into a improper plug, and that will for sure pop that diode or fuse. So anyway, let me go through my scrap power supplies and see how close I can come to those figures. So I've been looking in my collection of wall warts. I have a little box here. I think I have actually a couple of these. And these are all different types of power supplies that who knows where the mate is. But I keep them because they're useful for problems like this where I, somebody lost the plug to one. Anyway, I looked through here and I think I found a suitable match. But it's going to have to be probably... Uh, modified. We'll look at it here. I'll show it to you. Well, looky here. I got really fortunate. This is a power supply for a portable speaker set for a computer. And this is 9 volts DC and 1000 milliamps and we needed 850 so more of the milliamps is fine but we need to keep the 9 volts. And this is the best part. Look at here. A negative center. That's pretty uncommon. Now, we could have still used this, but we would have had to cut the wire and switch the leads or internally change it in the organ itself. But anyway, we can continue with our test. We found the, a power supply that will work. Now, I figured I would show you how you can tell if it's a negative or positive center if it's not marked, if this hadn't have been marked. So I'm plugging it in, and I'm going to use my multimeter to show you how to do that now. Let's do that. Okay, so I have my power supply plugged in, and you want to set your multimeter up to DC voltage and equal or greater than what it is. It's 9 volts, so I'm going to set mine to 20 volts DC. And, of course, you have a positive and negative lead on this, and that is going to be the key to tell us. So you have to start somewhere. So let's put the positive lead on the casing and the negative lead down the barrel. And this is a positive number, so this is the correct polarity, a black center. And we're getting a little more 9 volts out of it, but that's normal. Underloaded, it will go back down to 9. But as you can see, it's uh, positive 12 volts. Now what happens if I switch these around? I'll put the black one on the casing and the positive one in the center. And you can see it's a negative 12 volts. And that means that I have my polarity wrong because it's negative. So we know that this is the opposite of this setup, which is a black positive. 
anyway let's plug this into the organ and see if it will work maybe we'll get lucky and we just needed to find the cord somehow I doubt that now I should mention that you can buy universal power supplies online you used to be able to at Radio Shack and they came with a bunch of different fittings and a selector switch that you could adjust the voltage and some of them some of them even had a tip that you could turn the other way to get a different polarity for a negative center or a positive center so that's a handy thing to have if you find that on eBay or Amazon let's see if this organ works and here we go well that's okay this has more problems than just the power adapter it probably got a lot of voltage this was a uh, 9 volt a 12 volt could have been plugged in here very easily and it probably popped the diodes and I can tell you there's like a million screws that hold this thing together and I could take them out and look at the diodes and probably patch it up but this gives me a good opportunity I think to upgrade this I didn't really want this that much I just thought if I had it I was guilty feeling if I could fix it but I think I've come to the point where um, I can get a newer model with a record feature like I want and we'll just send this off to the uh, electronic graveyard if you will rest in peace Casio but this is a good lesson on how to determine what power adapter you may need for a device if you lose it you know and those are good lessons to know how to figure that out and that's how you do it so a couple announcements for the Guru Brew channel I won't be doing regular videos until next year and then we'll pick up with our regular schedule. I plan on being out of town to Washington DC for about 10 days right before Christmas. And if you live in the Washington DC greater area, hit me up on a private message and maybe we can do a meetup. I plan on taking my camera and doing some sightseeing and doing some filming so I may bring you some special Washington DC footage from my hotel room if I don't see you before Christmas Merry Christmas and Happy New Year it's all about keeping family and loved ones together keep that in mind over the season if somebody makes you mad and you want to hit them over the head just be cool anyway we'll see you next time thanks for watching bye for now